world famous Crazy Al, tiki sculptor extraordinaire, created this new mug in clay. And it's my job to turn it into a resin master and ship it off to the factory. It's a rush job. We got to be done by tomorrow. Let's get going. I found this giant tube in amongst our collection of useful objects in the studio. And it just happens to be exactly the right size I need for a mold case for this piece. I need a one foot piece of it, 12 inches. So let's just mark it off around the rim. Let's just use some tape. Just follow down my marks and boom, just like that. Let's go cut it. It's a little bit hard to control a big long tube like this. So what I'm gonna do is cut it a little long. We also need to cut it in half. So we'll just put a square on it, get it lined up straight and square to the edge. Like that. You also wanna mark the from this line, you want to mark down. And here, I'm just basically just eyeballing it square. Okay, let's get to waxing. I cut this disc of wood for the bottom, and that's to lift the sculpture up about a quarter of an inch to account for the shrinkage of the resin when we pour it. The trick to waxing something is to just get the surface as hot enough that the wax just cooks into the surface. So now I just want to seal around the edge with some oil clay, just to kind of seal the crack between the base and the sculpture. Okay, the base is nicely sealed, looking good. The next step is to seal the seam between the two halves. And I'm just gonna run a bead of beeswax down that seam, melt it all in there, just form a basically a, a, a bond of beeswax. Now, one thing I very much want to do is locate any areas that might catch bubbles as the rubber rises up inside the mold. We definitely don't want there to be any areas that can catch bubbles up underneath surfaces. The good way to prevent that is very simply to pre-paint any area that you might think could give you problems. As the rubber rises, it can get caught. Bubbles can get caught on the under surfaces. And so those are a really good place to pre-paint. This, is a, this brush is soft enough that I know it's not going to mark the clay in any way. This is Chavant clay. It's pretty hard. And by the way, you can clean the brush with acetone. It'll clean right out. And uh, this is a pre-paint brush that I've used many times. All right, this thing is ready to go into the mold. And uh, I'm just going to drop it overhead like that. To glue the base on, I'm just going to use sticky wax. All right, that looks like I've got a good seal all the way around the base, and that is gonna be on there. That is going nowhere. Quite a bit of weight of rubber down here at the bottom of this column, and I wanna make sure that it's not gonna pop, not gonna break, not gonna go anywhere. And I think that's looking good. What I've done is I just took some very lightweight cardboard, and I built myself a pouring funnel. And this thing is going to allow me to dump pour this very fast. So now I just need to seal it on there with more wax. Once that cools, that's really gonna bond that on there. I finished off the funnel with clay, made a nice tight joint, and now you'll see the rubber can just flow right in, just fast and easy. This mold is gonna weigh about five pounds, so it's quite a big chunk of rubber, and it's got to be poured quickly and efficiently. You don't wanna drape the model with rubber or you will catch bubbles. There's not a lot of room between the walls of the mold and the piece itself, so I need to direct the rubber down this narrow channel, and that's where this funnel just works its magic. It allows the rubber to flow down the back wall of the mold and drop all the way to the bottom. Then it fills the mold from the bottom up, which is what we always want it to do. Yank the funnel and trim it off. Thank you, funnel. You did your job. Look how easy this mold case comes apart, and that's the genius of waxes in action. They are 100% friendly to the rubber, and they also come apart super easy. All right, time to cut the mold. Starting out is definitely the hardest part. The trick to cutting molds is to stretch the rubber as much as you can. Try to cut clean and straight at the part, but jag it away from the part so that the mold halves will lock together. 
Okay, here's how the piece came out of the mold. As you can see, it sustained a little bit of damage up on top. Now, I expect to wreck or damage clay models when they come out of a mold, so that is not unanticipated, nor am I sad about it. It's just part of the process. Okay, I mixed up a 200 gram batch of resin, and that's nowhere near enough to fill this thing up, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hand slush cast. I'm thinking, that a lot of my regular viewers are going, slush cast, why don't you uh, put it on one of your rotating machines? And the answer is, I don't have time. Uh, this thing's due this morning. We gotta get this done. I poured it yesterday. This is a very quick job. And I just don't have time to build a cradle for this. And I only need one of these today. I need to ship one to the factory today. And since I only need one, I really actually don't need a rotating machine. Just dump it in there. I will simply rotate it by hand. And, what, and because I have a big opening at the bottom, I can see what I'm doing. I can watch the resin as it flows around inside, woo, inside the chamber. I try not to spill it. I might spill it. I got paper underneath me. Okay. So now we just take a plug, a leftover chunk of rubber from a previous job where I mixed up too much. And that is the advantage of keeping this stuff around. And then I'm just gonna hold it on there and slush it. Just want this to gel up enough. And I'll show you the other part of this trick. And it's gelled up enough, I believe. Let's put this into a cradle momentarily, just set it in. All right, now we're gonna go run this into the tank. I wanna show you something that I did here. I simply laid the mold down inside the tank. I didn't need to deal with the vertical tank because this was rotocast in effect. I put it into the tank just to squeeze out any bubbles and to prevent any foaming that might have happened in here. So now it's a simple matter of doing a solid pour, but I'm gonna do it in stages because I don't know how much it's gonna to take to fill this up. I'll do it in two or three pours. They don't even have to cure in between. And oh boy, this is getting hot. Woo, is it getting hot. Wowee, let's pour it. I have to pull it about up to here. I'll do a 400 batch on the next one. Let's go do it. Okay, here's a 400 gram batch. This is gonna be close. This is gonna be close. See if I calculated it right. <laughs> I eyeballed it. I'm always eyeballing. Let's see how I do. I ball it. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. That's what I like to see. When that chemical reaction's going off and all those bonds are forming like mad. All that cross-linking, less setting off heat. Okay, I'm about an inch short. All right, no biggie. Let's go mix up more. All right, away we go. This is the final batch. Well, let's pour it. I don't want to create a complete quarter inch thick pad on the bottom, it's too much to sand off. I think this will be just fine. It's been about 20 minutes, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm going to let you guys see it before I see it. I always want to cut as little as possible, so <laughs> it's putting up a little fight. We'll get it, don't worry, we'll get it. All right, there you go. All right, got it, nice. Let's take a look and see. And one little bubble right here under the nose, but that will scrape off okay. Bubble on the underside here. And where you see these bumps, uh, there are bubbles here that are inside the rubber, but they're not trapped against the edge of the part. It's just a simple matter just to shave those off. Otherwise, pretty clean, not seeing too much to complain about. You can see a little bit of flash there on the back, and. Now I'm just going around trimming the flash around the base, but that's not really necessary because I'm gonna sand the base flat on the belt sander anyway. I have to say that I'm pretty pleased with the way this copy came out. It's all looking good with minor cleanups and uh, it's ready to send off to the factory. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you learned something from it and I will see you in the next video. No time to waste. They started production immediately at the ceramics factory.
Oh my god, look at that clay up mauled. Oh, just shoot me. Shoot me. 